Hi, Larry. What's uh, what you doing up there, bud? Larry, say hi. Just hanging hi, out, Larry. being a kitty. <laughs> I really wish I got you jumping up there because that was insane. <laughs> he does this all the time. He well, he's been doing it more recently. He used to do it all the time. Then he kind of he goes through phases. He's just chilling. He's not clawing the crap out of your shoulder. No, sometimes he does for sure. But right now he's just like very chill. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, this is William Hung, and it is Douster time. What's up, you guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Seltzer Time Podcast. It's your boy Ricky, a.k.a. Dick Chuck, a.k.a. the man behind the can at Seltzer Time Official. Here is always in the conversation accomplice, the man with the hunch about Worcester, Travis. What is cracking, Fizzle Fiends? Welcome back to another episode of the Seltzer Time Podcast. And as always, we are glad you're with us. This week on the show, we are talking to CEO of Lincoln Crafted, Paul Lincoln, uh, owner of a beautiful dad stash. We talk about handmade candles and awesome local beers. But before we get there, y'all know what we have to do. Hey, Ricky, how was your week? What's up? Uh, my week was good. I re-fell in love with music today, which is great. Again? Yeah, I go through this thing where like, I like kind of re-fall in love with it every couple of days. But today was a good was a good day for me in terms of music, so I'm pretty stoked about that. What uh, um, lit the fire under your butt? Uh, like, what 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 was it today that you fell in love with? I didn't know what to listen to, um, so I usually fall back. I usually listen to like the same three bands when I don't know what to listen to. And um, I, what the heck was I listening to when I went to work? I don't remember what I listened to when I went to work. But I got a text message about the Menzingers from a friend of mine who didn't really like the men's singers like growing up. Um, so that was pretty interesting. So you would think that I would have put on the men's singers, but I didn't, <laughs> it just like kind of got me triggered be like, Oh cool. I remember when you hated that, not hated, but I remember when you didn't like that band and then, yeah, yeah so yeah, yeah. that was cool. And then that. I put on uh this has been chapel, just like, it's this guy and a girl. Um, I can't remember the girl's name, but she's one of my favorite drummers ever she's incredible but they put out this record that's like super 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 poppy really synth heavy um but with phenomenal drums and the lyrics are cool they're like they're serious but they're not to be taken too serious i guess it has okay. kind of a 1975 vibe to it so i saw them live once it was so much fun um and yeah, they're just, they're a really cool band, but they only have one full length record out, but they've put out, I think two other songs outside of that. And just everything they do is really, really good. That's awesome. I like that so, funk sound. Like Courtney Grinwis, Courtney Grinwis, Grinwis, okay. Grinwis. That's the drummer. She's, she's unbelievably better than everybody else. It's ridiculous. That's awesome. I was listening to a band this week called uh, Krungbin. I think is how you pronounce it. Uh, there's some like Houston, Texas band. They're a three piece. It's, a, it's oh, cool. a, a guy, a woman, and they both have these like, I'm assuming they're wigs, but like these like long bangs. And then okay. their drummer's just this black dude that like they don't look like they fit together. Like it almost looks like the black dude stumbled upon these two like reincarnated Egyptian people. And they all just started to form a band together. It's so okay. fucking cool. It's like this, it's rooted in um, Arabic or Middle Eastern music. It's, oh, yeah. but it's like modern funk. It's, all right. it's so rad. But like, so I'm with you. I fall in love with music over and over again. <laughs> and like, I'm on it for days. And then I'm like, all right, I burn myself out. Yeah. Like I have a whole list of podcasts that I need to get through and I just kind of can't. So Yeah. Other than that, I had the poutine from Dead Horse. It was incredibly good. It looked insane. Yeah, it was awesome. I was super pumped about that. And then uh, my 
boyfriend, as some people are calling him, Jason Tatum, signed a max contract to stay with the Celtics. So life is life is great. How was your week? My week was good, man. Um, productive as usual. Uh, the new can, we talk about it later, but this is the new can for greater good. My Sick. lights are messing with it. <laughs> it's uh, Ric Flair is a moose. There you go. It's pretty fun. Um, I love working with those guys. Yeah, uh, it's the, the second can I've done with them and hopefully not the last. Oh, yeah. I'm, I just want, I, I love the idea of people walking into the, the beer hall and just being like, woo! And like, that's their beer order. Or if they're like, woo, woo! That's how they order two woos. I, yeah. I, just, I don't know why I love it so much, but I do. Uh, so when, not to like cut you off, but when no, they announced, <laughs> when I saw the label for that beer, the first thing that came to mind was this Kanye West lyric. And then when JT posted the can the other day, he, okay. I did, we never even talked about it, but he quoted the exact same Kanye West line. And I was like, yes, I was so excited. That's, that is pretty rad. It was awesome. Okay. Uh, continue. I don't know. I don't know the Kanye West line, but I like it. Um, and then couple last week. coming on cuz. Couple woos coming on cuz. There it was. That one. I thought that was just something he wrote. I know exactly what you're talking about. I didn't. <laughs> that's. I didn't know that was a reference. Right over my head. Um, we walked the site of the next potential, the powwow golden year, uh, this weekend, and cool. It's pretty freaking cool. We're clearly, clearly not ready to talk about it yet, but uh, okay. definitely looked at where it could be, and it would be really cool if it was there. So. Good vibes, good stuff. Oh yeah. It was nice to think and plan about something like, and now with the news that there's two vaccines, like, and it, you know, we can we're moving to further in the clinical trial and further into actual rolling it out. Like having a thought about next end of summer isn't completely off the table now. Like up, yeah. up everything up until this point has been like giant question mark. Now it's like smaller question mark it probably should be okay, but who knows? And we're still planning accordingly and not, you know, not planning any large parties, not planning anybody they can plan in a group, but still figuring out a way to plan an art festival. Oh yeah. So pumped on it. That's super rad. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's about all I had. Just busy working, staying here, looking at my computer, nice. roasting my eyeballs. Oh, I know what I did. I released uh, a series of paintings I've been working on. I'll cut these together so it didn't look like I just ran away. But then I'll probably leave that because I'm an idiot. Um, I've been working on these paintings because I, I love the look of saw blades. I love yeah. And they are real saw blades that my friend Ben Klein um, hooked me up with all these. He knew I was looking for them. And he went to a couple of places and then a bag of That's them. That's the dude up. from... Technicopia, right? Yeah, Klein. Okay, Klein. I was like, I know that name. <laughs> Kleincraft, Ben from Technicopia. Amazing dude. Love Ben. Uh, Love his wife. Um, hi, Liza, if you're listening. Anyway, uh, so I've been having these sitting around for a while, and I've tried to collab with a couple artists on these, and I never knew what I wanted to do. I was putting eyeballs on them for a little bit and calling them eyesores, but like it didn't really stick, and then nobody wants to hang an eyeball in their house. So... I started just throwing like really cool color and then gold. I'm really into gold at the moment. That's um, cool. And people seem to be digging them. So I released a series of them on my website, travisduda.com. And we've been selling a couple of them. And my Sarah's pumped because I'm getting these saw blades out of the house that have just been sitting around for <laughs> months at a time. Nice. But it's just been a nice thing to like pour my stress anxiety into and like my loneliness and I want to go out and play with my friends, but I can't. So I'm going to go paint this saw blade. There you go. And, you know, sometimes it's cool to make crafts. And every craft starts somewhere. And that's as good as a segue as I have to uh, go talk to Paul Lincoln from Lincoln Crafted, <laughs> talking about candles. Am I too close? Should I move this further back? Like you are handsome. Me? That dad stash is working for you. <laughs> <laughs> Dad's stash. That's what it is, man. I feel like you can't really own one of those unless you are. <laughs> it's only because of COVID because it, it took me months to get this far. So 
Doesn't that's matter awesome. how long. It's all that you have. It. Yeah, I'm not a uh, a facial hair grower for sure. <laughs> I can grow a beard, but I look. I can't pull off a mustache. My dad had one for a couple of years. Um, well, actually, he might even no. He has kind of a like scruffy kind of thing going on but he did a mustache when he was younger and it looked so cool but at, when i got older and shaved off my beard every time i shave i'll leave the mustache just to like look at it and i'm like i can't do this <laughs> it doesn't every work. time every time you're not a dad yet man yeah. <laughs> true if you true. ever cross that line and you yeah. become a father like like sean Connolly is just waiting there at the finish line waiting yeah. to, be, yeah. to just yeah. grow the stash full and <laughs> my dad has a mustache. My dad has a mustache my entire life. And my, awesome. for my 21st birthday, uh, I asked him, I was like, hey, for my 21st, would you shave it off? And my, we're standing in the kitchen and my mom's in there too. And she's cutting up something. She turns around, she points the knife at me and she goes, he's not cutting it off. <laughs> he has a weird upper lip and we hide it. <laughs> That's awesome. So I've oh, never seen my dad's upper lip. Um, so mustaches aside, this week on the show, we are talking to <laughs> Paul Lincoln, the CEO and owner of that glorious mustache, the CEO of Lincoln Crafted. Paul, thank you so very much for coming on the show. Uh, nice to see you, my friend. Nice to see you too. Nice to have, uh, thanks for having me. Very excited. Long time fan, first time guest. Yeah. <laughs> what would you say? It's like long time listener first time call yeah yeah I, was trying to, <laughs> you know, I would phrase that for a podcast the sports radio the sports radio line i love that yeah whenever they call like yeah long time first time oh i yeah. just want to say tom brady is the best like okay <laughs> good <Yeah>. insight <laughs> um so uh the, 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 ricky and i have been a fan of Paul's company for a while. We've seen his candles and his offerings out in the community. And he's been on our radar for years, but it's just years. We can say that now because we've been at this two years. Um, uh, kind of crazy. Cheers to that. But if that's yeah, thanks, man. Um, but it felt right now that we're coming into the holiday season to kind of make some time for Paul and his story. So, Paul, if you don't mind for our listeners, let's take us back from the beginning. What does Lincoln Crafton do and why did you like what made you start sure yeah i mean i think it really starts from my love of beer i guess um <laughs> and like i for a long long time i was a just generic bud light guy and then i started i my main my full-time job is i work for tjx and i for a while i was traveling a lot for them meeting with landlords in various states and I would always like to try some of like the local beers and stuff like that um and then just kind of really started liking it more and more as I tried new things and realized like that there's a lot dif more different styles than just like a Bud Light or whatever out there and and then I like I really got into it when I was at this place in out in Santa Monica it was called Father's Office it was like okay. it was, it was what a name <laughs> it's a burger place and it's like it's themed like your dad's office like there's like random mugs on the wall and like it, it's a cool little like funky spot That's and awesome. i was like you know i, I always travel by myself i was just like sitting at the bar having dinner and there was a line of people at the bar just like waiting for and they every single person got the same beer and so like i had to ask the guy i was like what's the deal like is this like some like special beer or something and uh it was like the Lagunitas, which is out in California, not far from there. It was like their Waldo special ale. And they did it like once a year and like they had just released it. And I had not been into the beer game really enough yet to know like that this was a thing. Like people would go to specific places, you know, now, you know, four or five years later, like that's like half my life is doing things like that. <laughs> so did you so, try the Lagunitas? Yeah, it, it was really good. And it got me hooked. And, um, and like ever since, you know, it was funny. And I was talking to the guy, you know, he's like, oh, you're from Massachusetts. He's like, have you ever been to Treehouse? And I was like, what's Treehouse? And I didn't even know at that point. And then when I came back, um, I went like not long after. And this was when they were still out in, um, in Munson. And uh, yeah, it had kind of been slippery slope ever since <laughs> but yeah no and then you know the candle thing really kind of started with 
uh, Treehouse has like their staple beers and they, then they have like the curiosity series that they do, which is, um, for the most part through one, this one artist that they use that each can and each beer is different. And they're really, it was really cool artwork. And I just found myself saving the cans because I felt like they were cool to save. And then got to the point where it was like, I needed to do something with all the cans because it got to be an aggressive amount. And, uh, I, I couldn't even tell you how I came up with the idea, but it started making candles one day just kind of for myself and uh, gave a few as like Christmas gifts one year. And, uh, and then people kind of started asking for them. And I started an Etsy site and sold like 25 or so like that Christmas and uh, didn't really think it was a big deal, but it was like, you know, a nice little extra cash for Christmas and kind of, you know, a few sales would come in here and there and then just, really started to try and um push it more and more with as like instagram and facebook and stuff started becoming more popular not necessarily selling channels for me but i guess more like marketing and like getting the word out there sure. um, avenues for us and um and yeah so it's been crazy and then so we're, that was really our main um and still is probably you know one of our main sources is, is etsy as it's just it's not really feasible right now for us to have like a separate website um but uh and then really what jumped us off was starting at crompton which was last october so we've been there a little over a year now and it's been awesome like that was really our ultimate goal was to get in there you know we always thought it was a a great product for the, the customer base and just because we do a lot of local or ma mainly I should say local cans and things like that that we thought it'd be a, a great partnership and and it has it's I can't keep up with it at this point <laughs> it's it's been tough uh with the new baby I, it used to be a lot easier but now it's my hours are my, my hours in my hands are less free so it's been difficult understood <laughs> It's hard to make candles with only one hand and the baby and the other, but it's it's been a fun experience and and I, I love it. But uh, but yeah, and then we so I started with one shelf last year and we actually added a second shelf at Crompton um, during COVID. I I said yes, anticipating that hopefully things would you know. And this was actually when you couldn't even go in Crompton; it was like phone and online orders only. But I rolled the dice thinking it'd be a good opportunity. And I, I think we have the, like, the, if not the best spot, one of the best spots in the store, like traffic wise. And just adding a whole nother shelf was, I thought was a great opportunity. So I, I rolled the dice and it's, I thought it would steady things out, but it's actually made things even crazier. But it's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you thought you'd be like able to hold more product there for longer? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that, cause that was the problem. Like last year is I was there almost every day from. Holy crap. The end of November through Christmas, pretty much. That's so I figured so I'd be able to at least put some out, but it's, um, this weekend wasn't as bad, but last weekend I was there Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And it was, it was pretty crazy. Like not every single thing was gone, but like Saturday into Sunday, I might've sold, you know, three quarters of my candles just that's so insane. yeah can, so was, can we ask numbers like how many candles in a weekend are you moving are we talking in the hundreds are we talking uh, in the thousands last, no 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 um <laughs> well i'm just uh, i don't know what no, you're no, capable no, like, of like last weekend i probably sold a hundred candles i would say that's still awesome yeah that's, yeah, yeah, that's legit is, you're which is not pouring candles yeah and like so yeah and like that's the thing is i make they're all hand poured i do like the most i do in like a single batch is like three <laughs> like like I, I did the biggest batch i think this past friday mainly because it was my birthday this weekend i didn't want to make as many candles Happy over birthday. The weekend. thank you um so i i did a whole bunch friday i made probably 50 candles on friday but it, it took me forever <laughs> oh it's just it, i do different things <laughs> yeah but yeah like uh i do different scents and like and they're all made pretty much on demand so okay but that's that's kind of how we wanted it to, to be and if, you know 
when I, I, I like the ability to offer the customers, you know, you can, you know, you, they ordered four candles, like you can get all four in different scents. You can get the same. I, I like to offer the option of them to be able to customize it. Obviously it's a little different at Crompton and down there. I just kind of pick a random, you know, this time of year, it's more like holiday type of stuff and things like that. But, uh, but yeah, it's, I like the, you know, we handwrite all of our notes and like all of our tags and stuff like that. So it's, we try and make it a, a personal experience if kind of thing, if you will, as much as we can. And it makes a huge difference. Yeah. And yeah. We, we try and use like, um, you know, the local cans from, you know, I do pretty much any can, don't get me wrong, but you know, we're polar <laughs> seltzers are one of our biggest, like, if not our biggest sellers, um, Treehouse, like I mentioned, and then even Greater Good and Redemption Rock and a lot of the local um, places are, are very popular, especially this time of year as gifts and things like that. So, um, you know, we're trying to keep it as, as small as possible, uh, you know, as we can to mainly to not you know overwhelm me <laughs> it's supposed to be fun and <laughs> yeah not. yeah exactly right. like it's you know I, I like being able to give you know people the opportunity to give cool gifts and things like that so it's it's in i think the only way to keep that kind of you know because we've looked into like you know a stamp instead of handwriting things and you know a thank you card that's not written but just kind of like pre-done and like we would just like sign it or whatever and I don't know. I, I think it's a, a nice little touch. Like when I get things in the mail, like I know like the Worcester wears guys, like you guys always like adding like, you know, a little note or like a little uh, pin and just those like small little things I feel like go a long way. And for sure, they really there's do. definitely other, especially with Etsy and things like that. There's definitely other, you know, can making businesses out there. Um, but I feel like, you know, we try and, you know, go the extra line, you know, we, you know, I make like little matches for each of our things that, that are just, it's classy that, that I buy at stop and shop and put our stickers on them. Like, you That's know, so <laughs> awesome. <laughs> you know, it's just like little things that like, it's, it adds up for the time, but I think, you know, we, we have all five-star reviews on all of our Etsy stuff. So it's, it pays off, you know what I mean? And, and we definitely have repeat customers on Etsy and, Crompton. Crompton's hard to to keep up with, like analytic wise of like repeat people, but I, just people I've seen in there, and they're like, "Oh, I bought four of these last week." And, <laughs> already back. and you know, and just people that you see in the community a lot, and um, you know, spreading the word has, has been great. So it's it's been cool. Oh yeah, my friend Lauren, the first candle of yours I ever got. Uh, my friend Lauren, shout out Lauren Morocco. Um, she got it for me. I think for my birthday or something i think it was last year it might have been, actually it might have might have been like two years yeah maybe it was like two years ago but she got me one of the little polar seltzer mini ones and like brought it to the dive and she put it down and i honestly like i didn't realize it was a candle at first like i thought she just oh, brought yeah, me a yeah. seltzer because everybody does yeah, and i went yeah. to pick it up and i'm like what this is so sick like <laughs> it was awesome it was funny we've done shows before and there's been guys that have come up to the table like, oh, I thought you were selling beers. <laughs> it's like, yeah, they just let us sell Treehouse, like the only people possible that could ever even do that. Right. They gave us that right to do it here at the <laughs> North Pro <You>, Apple Fest. <laughs> that actually raises an interesting point, though. Like, have you ever gotten crap from the companies of the cans you're using? I was just going to ask the same question. <laughs> That's a good question. And, and I've got that question before. Um, and no, I haven't. Um, when I first, when I first started, you know, actually thinking about like, you know, making it a, a business, if you will. Um, I looked into that a little bit because part of me was like, well, where's the designation between like, you know, I bought the can or somebody bought it and gave it to me or, you know, technically trash. Like in theory, I could have picked this out of somebody's garbage. Yeah, so, you know what I mean. So I think it's kind of a gray a gray area from what I've read. Um, like I said, I, I had seen other people doing it, which which gave me a little more confidence. Um, at least like nationally, it, it, when I started, at least there wasn't anybody locally. There's a few others um, 
in the area now ish um, that, that you've probably inspired which is kind of cool yeah i've gotten a lot of i think covid has got people inspired to start something to do as well um uh-huh. but uh but yeah so like and you know a lot of them when i post things like i've tagged other places in um i know like some places that uh, like redemption rock like we that's one of the places we have candles at and they you know they buy bulk orders and we um sell in their shop we're working on a holiday order for them right now so some you know and like i know some of the bigger places have definitely like liked my posts and stuff so that's you cool. know it's like so if they're they're aware of it and part of me is like well it's free advertising for them too so yeah um and I know so like that was that was what I was thinking is like yeah. you are using recycled goods and you are coming to them clearly by either purchasing or somebody has purchased them. So you yeah. technically own the property and now you are recycling property and that's okay. Yeah, and I think once you repurpose it, it's kind of there's like legally it's kind of shifts and bingo. Yeah. So knock on wood, I haven't had to deal with that well, yet. But I mean and the worst they can do is ask you to take it down. And then yeah, you just exactly. don't sell that one. And that's yeah. fine. And there's some breweries like I know that I won't like that I won't deal with just because I know they've done like crazier things to other breweries that are like like uh. Stone Brewing, for example, I guess is notorious for anybody that even has the word like stone in their name. Like Yes. And it's yeah, like I'm surprised they haven't come after Stone Cow. Like it's one of those like <laughs> Seriously, like, that's, time, how, probably. that's how outrageous it is. I've read a bunch of articles yeah. about it, and it's like, in some, I feel like there was one that wasn't even a brewery. It's like, what? They just like have nothing else to do, I guess. I don't know, but yeah, it was it was a couple years ago, right? Yeah, and I think it's happened again recently. Ah, okay. Yeah, I think they're like back at it. <laughs> so. I, I honestly like kind of forget that they're a brewery. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that's they the were thing, so like, big, like. I think a couple you know, be relevant again, I guess. Yeah. Not a good way to go about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so long story short, it's, it's so far so good. Um, you know, we try and partner with, with other places too. Like I know, you know, when I go to new places, I'll usually try and grab cans and then, you know, bring them a candle is the, you know, the next time I go out there and oh, nice. try and, uh, you know, welcome to the community. Like there's a new place out in Sterling or uh, Clinton that just opened the other uh, couple weeks ago, Sterling street that they just did their first cans this past week. Oh, oh sick. Yeah. It's a cool little spot. So I went down Friday and it's actually, it's a kid that one of them is in uh, our like local, like Facebook beer group. So it's cool to see like somebody local open, you know, a new little spot. So definitely something to check out Sterling street brewery. Yeah, I'll definitely check that out. I grew up um, like super close to Clinton. I grew yeah. I grew up in West Boylston, but like I grew up on the Sterling side. But yeah, if you yeah, go yeah. down like 110 or whatever it is, uh, it's like five minutes to Clinton. Yeah, my yeah. Parents house, so. yeah it's not far from uh, good old Rhoda Springs. You get oh, yeah. All that ice cream after. <laughs> That's the spot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, sure. So when you got into the polar doing the polar cans has polar reached out to you at all no and i thought they were interesting i had heard that they were op- they're opening or considering opening like a retail spot i don't know if maybe covid oh. but like at maybe i don't know i think it was like at their place okay you could kind of go that's what i heard I, I don't know how true it was but um i don't know if covid pushed that back but you know, I always try and tag them for on their on all their stuff, and um, one day maybe. Yeah. So popular, I don't know if I could keep up with it. Yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I don't know who runs their their social media, but we yeah. I've tagged them. I think probably like ninety percent of the things that we've ever put out, I have tagged them in. I went through a phase where I tagged them in every single thing, and then I stopped for a while because like there was not like I need them to see it, but we weren't getting any, like they weren't even yeah, like no liking tracking. it. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, this is stupid. And not even now one sometimes I do. That stinks. Yeah, it was weird. But <laughs> that'd be so yeah, smart though, if they did like, if they teamed up with you and you did candles, because that's such a genius idea. 
like especially for yeah. uh, here. I oh. think it'd be it'd be a good um, partnership, especially then they could supply me the cans. <laughs> so that that'd be the part that's cool, but you would need to yeah, figure yeah. out production. Yeah, that's the thing. That's oh yeah. The thing. Are you ever thinking about growing this thing to like production level? I don't know. Is it worth I it? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think it, it. I think it gets to the point where it's it's too much. I don't know. It, it's hard to see it getting any further. At least right now, like I know. Cause it's, you know, pretty much me um, and my wife and she, she helps out with the tags and, and all the smaller things. And then we're planning on having our soon to be three month old, you know, in the next month or two, learn how to write out tags. Oh, <laughs> smart. No, no, because, that's good. That's just good parenting. Right. Yeah. Like, I mean, why wait like a couple of years till they can do those things? Like when she's you, learning how to handwrite, you know, yeah. yeah. We figure once she goes to school, like she'll be like fine motor skills will be off the charts because <laughs> she'll already be. But yeah, I mean, it's it's tough. And it's one of those things too. Or it's collecting like, cans from other kids, being like, "Daddy, yeah. need these." <laughs> Seriously. Oh yeah. Well, I feel like I'm kind of like that now. Or it's like anytime I see people I know, which isn't very often these days. <laughs> but when I did, everyone just like hands me a bag of cans. <laughs> I have cans in my trunk waiting for you that I was yeah, told by yeah. Jess Walsh. Yep. I have a bunch of cans in my garage that <laughs> yep. I'm holding for Everybody's me. got cans. Like, I'm also the can lady. <laughs> That's so funny. Yep. Joke's on yep. us. He's been taking these back for a nickel apiece and making way more money. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, you this... find me at the redemption center with just like trucks of cans. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you the uh, the lady that goes around getting them in our neighborhood definitely likes me though because there's some that I can't use or whatever. Oh, so I end up there's some weeks that I have like a hundred cans out there just waiting for. It. Oh, I almost hit the can guy. I don't think we have a can guy in our neighborhood. I don't know. Not anymore. But when I you lived hit on him with your car, yeah, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> you didn't like him. He took him out. <laughs> oh, bam! No, when I uh, when I lived off of Shrewsbury Street, the can guy would come Thursday nights or no, he'd come Wednesday nights. And cause I think our, our, uh, trash pickup was on Thursday morning and I'd work the dive bar. So I'd get home at like three in the morning and it's, it's pitch blackout. And I pull in and I'll never forget the first time I ever saw this man. I didn't know he was like a thing. (laughs) And so I like pulled into the street and like went to pull into my driveway. And I'm like, why is there like a guy just standing basically in my driveway going through my recycling? So I kind of pulled up and I got out and I'm like, am I about to get mugged? (laughs) So I walk by and he just kind of looks at me and I could see he's like taking cans. And I was just like, that man and i like went inside went upstairs i was like what just happened so the next day i asked my roommate i'm like yeah do you know there's a guy who like takes cans he's guy he's cool he just he's not gonna do anything he literally just takes all the cans and then moves on i I almost ran him over (laughs) did you guys listen to waf like do you ever remember mike the can man from the morning show no they had this guy called Mike the Can Man that would come in from framing him, and he was a fucking crazy person. Like, he was just crazy. Um, I met him. Like, oh, we used to play softball. I used to live around Framingham, so we'd play softball around there, and this guy would come flying around on his bicycle with a Santa-sized sack of empty cans. And, like, if we had beers sitting out on the bench, he would take our half-drank beers and just start emptying them. No. And we're like, Mike, what are you doing? We're not doing, yeah, 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 whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the guy was a dick. That's amazing. And That's I incredible. And yelled at our local can person, um, some poor young, not young, older woman. She was uh, going through our bucket. And she just left a bunch of trash out. Like it was going to blow through the street. So I just, I yell out the window. Hey. And she looked up. She goes, you scared me. I go, I know that was the point. Clean up the mess. I'm just taking the cans. I don't care. Just, just clean up the mess. (laughs) Okay. She did. I haven't had a problem since. That's so good. There's like competing ones in my neighborhood. It's like a, an war. Really? Like, yeah, there's, yeah, there's, there's, There's a couple, there's like a, a troop that you, is the normal Thursday crew. But then there's another lady that's trying to infiltrate and she comes Wednesday nights 
and she's got she because she goes at night she's got the headlamp and everything yeah yep. it, it's a process it's a thing that's i mean funny. in the time of covid i give it up to anybody that's being oh, resourceful yeah. enough to go through other people that's money that's literally just On money thursday the the troop of, there's like they canvas the whole neighborhood <laughs> they come in one car and then they get out and walk and then they meet up like an hour or two later. Yeah, it's, it's that's like incredible. A, yeah, it's a system for sure. Trick or trashing. Yeah. All right. Um, do you know the number of cans you've made, or the number of candles you've made, like over the last couple of years? Um, I could tell you if I open my spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if you had like Up a the top of my head, like um, ballpark. <clears throat> probably like 1500 i'd say oh my god yeah i think last i forget i think last christmas season which is a vague term now because like this year <laughs> yeah, like that's... this year it started probably like almost the beginning of october but yeah. like last year and the year before probably more like the beginning of november it's like i i usually can tell like when etsy starts to pick up um but this like last year i think i sold like 800 to a thousand just last christmas season That's i mean wild. just started at the street i sold like 200 plus candles just to start at the station i believe it i'll start at the station that's an event where people come <clears throat> I, I left i left and had to go home and i'm like picking up like duds that are like three quarter pours and like selling them for cheaper because like we had nothing left with like two two and a half hours left in the day we had an empty table oh it was, and then like i also had to go to like crompton and restock in between like it was it was <laughs> that was a crazy day but that's what like sucks about covid too is like those shows like that are like big hits for definitely for us um, i mean and you know anybody in kind of our you know craft industry or whatever you want to call it it's you know that and that was just one show like we we were looking at doing a couple this year um just because that one was so successful but it's not even an option although yeah. it kind of, kind of work now <clears throat> in hindsight because i don't know if i could have kept up with it volume wise like uh timber yard is doing was it last week like a virtual yeah i think it's like virtual. is it two is it over the course of two weekends I can't remember. I, I saw the flyer. Um, yeah. But they asked me to do it. And I, I really considered it, but I just, I don't think I could keep up. I don't, and, and because of like the unknown quantity of orders, I like, I, would, I feel bad like turning away orders if people place them. So I just, I had to turn it down. Yeah. It was, just wasn't. Baby's a lot of work, let me tell you. Yeah, I hear that. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> but it's good. It's good though. But yeah, it's it's been a lot. And that was and that was just last year. So I mean it's been I think this is our fourth Christmas. So it's been roughly four years, like three and a half, four years. But yeah, I'd wow. say probably close to two thousand total. Damn. That's man. So insane. A lot of wax. A lot of yeah. wax. 100% <laughs> soy wax. So. Yeah. Yeah. And it comes in, I buy 50 pound boxes of it. That's amazing. A lot. The, the guy did not like me the other day when I bought six of them. Damn. Oh. The delivery guy? Yeah. He was not a happy camper. That's 300 yeah. pounds. And I don't blame him. I don't blame him. But I panic ordered because like three days before they were sold out. This is like this is like a month ago. I was like, "All right, I just gotta order everything now once they come in," and I probably still will have to order a little more. Yeah, it's like fifty pounds will get me like almost like a little more than fifty like tall boy can candles. They're about a pound a piece. Though. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's sixteen ounces. Nice. Yeah, um, and that's one weekend at Crompton. It's like one weekend a box at Crompton roughly is what I've been going through. How are you melting all this wax? Like you're not doing it on your stovetop, are you? That's how we first started. And I, I imagine it was. <laughs> and then I got banished to the basement because I had a feeling. <laughs> Cause it came in like little, it comes in like little chips, you know, like little, you know, like paint chips almost looking. 
Um, and it, they get, it's just impossible to have like a perfect pour and like getting it out of the box. So, and I didn't know it was a thing to buy like, just like a burner like, yeah. and plug it in. I like figured you had to have a stove. I don't know. I didn't really cook at that point. So, <laughs> And so, so my wife was like, like an electric burner yeah so she was oh, like yeah. buy a burner so i only had one um, like a hot plate yeah exactly and then uh a guy at work gave me like a double burner so it's just it's got two. Oh, cool so, so i technically have three but it's it's hard to keep up with three so i usually just run two at a time um and then you just use like a double boiler just like you'd make like chocolate or, or sure. whatever, stuff like that and then it's just waiting a lot of waiting <laughs> so while we were talking um we were talking about ways like how do you how do you expand past other people's labels and it just like a thought occurred to me and i'm going to share it to you through here uh if you want me to cut it so other people don't steal it that's totally cool but i are there anybody out there doing candles in cans but with like their own labels but the the labels are the scent so it'd be like Lincoln crafted lavender and you design the can to be lavender scented, but that's like, there's. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have seen those. There's um another fairly successful one out of New Hampshire. And I forget what their name is, but. um doesn't matter. We're not trying to give them free. Yeah. Yeah. It, but I, and um they actually, I know that they did. So the guy, the artist name is Kiever that does the treehouse cans. And I know they, I don't know what kind of deal they did, but essentially they made their own cans and he did the artwork for the labels. Um, they were cool. I just, for me, like, and I thought about like looking just into curious. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't know. And I, th and I thought about it, but then I kind of like put myself in the perspective of the person buying the candle and if you're buying a candle for like the prettiness of it, like a lot of people are probably buying like not ones made out of cans. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's a really good point. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so like, it, now granted, I do have some with flowers and stuff on that, but I feel like even still like the people that are buying them are like beer fans and, or yeah. you know, fans of like whatever that. Candle is. to me is the perfect gift because it's androgynous. It's like yeah. multiple, anybody can use a candle. Anybody likes things that smell good. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. It has such a universal audience and that's. Yeah. And it I works think, out for me. Cause like you literally make can, you make candles out of like two of my favorite things, beer <laughs> and seltzer. Yeah. Right. So, and then once you start making coffee candles, I'm all set. That's yeah. all I need. <laughs> <laughs> you like use the bean bag somehow to make oh, a candle. Yeah. Put a mold inside it or something. <laughs> I'm sorry. When I hear the word beanbag, I cringe. <laughs> but yeah, like I've thought about it, and then like, I clearly it's already been done. So I'm yeah. I'm no, well, the other thing too, like, I, I just wasn't sure, like, what to put on it either. You know what I mean? Like, I I, I couldn't decide like what I would even do. You know what I mean? I just oh. have so many cans as it is. <laughs> I respect the hell out of that. <laughs> and then the other thing is, um, I figured like, obviously that'd probably cost additional money. And then, so I'd probably have to increase the prices yeah. of the candles. And then it'd be one of those things where you would see the cost up front. Yeah. But in the long run, you would end up like, so if you're buying a design, if you're working with a designer, you would license a design and then that's yeah, your yeah, design, yeah. you know, and then yeah. that's yours. So like, that's what I've just did with greater good. They hired me to do oh, yeah, yeah, their, yeah, their yeah. can design. So we, I did that for a price turned over that artwork and now they can print that through perpetuity mm -hmm. given our contract. Yeah. 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 It all depends on how you want to grow. Clearly yeah, yeah, yeah. you like being that craft dude making small time, not small time candles, but like taking small batch candles and making them with some love and not necessarily being the beer candle guy. Making yeah. Yeah. For yeah. Millions of people. And yeah. Respect yeah, yeah. The hell out of that. For you sure, know what you want to do. Sure. Like I, I don't see it being like, you know, I'm making mass orders for Budweiser to sell on their shop <laughs> with, with their branding or like, you know what I mean? Like it's, I, you know, I, like you said, like I like the, the smallness of it and that's perfect. You same. know what you want to do. 
Yeah, exactly. And plenty of people in this world just wish they knew what they want to do. <laughs> like me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. But yeah, it's, it's just one of those things. Like, I don't know. I think I like where it's at right now. I think we could definitely grow. Just not sure how much more. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I think well, we'll have to have more kids if we want to grow more. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Or hire some kids, but and that's that's the thing is like you know people have said like oh you need to charge more you need to charge more but there there comes to like a threshold where it's like all right like how much am I really spending on a can of the, a candle that's in a can yeah. you know what I mean and so like we we think we're at a decent price point so I don't want to increase the costs at all as well and keep it at a stable point. So I don't know, man. I mean, I'm all about that supply and demand and it seems like you are fucking burning your knuckles. True. True. Trying to this keep up. True. I, uh, I always tell clients to like, think about it. Like major companies do don't go for big bumps, go for little bumps, Yeah, yeah bump yeah. it up a nickel, bump it up a dime. Most people won't know. And you play that penny nickel game, man. <laughs> I'm serious, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They all sure. do it to us, and we don't. Oh, fucking, yeah. We no. don't know. No, no, no. There's a strategic method to the madness for sure. Oh, and again, <laughs> we're we're in November, so everybody, we forget that the prices have slowly gone up since somewhere in the middle of the summer. And then yep. they're going to hit us with the, the Black Friday sales. Yeah. But they've just come down to where the prices should be in the first place. 15% off. But yeah, 15% off what it was in March. Yeah. <laughs> but that's just the way. I mean, and that's bully to the, to the other humans that have figured out how the herd thinks and reacts. And mm -hmm. I um, did get to try that woo beer. That was pretty good. Did you like it? That woo. Woo. It is strong, it is strong for <laughs> yeah. sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's so, 10%? 10 percent, 10 percent, and like I was telling people, and I was like, blah blah blah, middle of the road, because that's what JT told me. JT says they have a high and they have a low, and there's like this woo is supposed to come in somewhere in the middle, and they're all like, 10 percent's in the middle, ten yeah. percent good, good definitely. <laughs> well, yeah, because I think the gray lock is like 12. It's uh, like that, right? I think it's like 12 point something. Yeah, it is. It's in the twelves for sure. So I guess yeah, technically that's, that's their middle, but that's nobody else's middle. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, but yeah, so that was a fun one. I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, the can's really cool. Thanks, man. I can't wait to see it in the candle. <laughs> um, Paul, before we let you go, what is your favorite beer ever? Ever? Oh wow. Um. <laughs> That's a good question. I'd say one of my favorite, probably my favorite is the Sweetwater 420 from Atlanta. Okay. That was one of the, it's one of the other ones that got me started into beer. The brewery is pretty cool down there. And I would went there like every year for work. It's just a plain, like old school pale ale style. Oh yeah. Stuff. Nowadays it's hard. You can get it up here now, which is crazy. Um, but yeah, I'd say that or probably just the regular Julius. Yeah. And then what's your favorite seltzer? Ooh. I like the mini ones. <laughs> it's probably because we drink <laughs> so go. many of them because we use the cans. <laughs> I'm just so used to like, I think the Yeti one is probably my, my go-to. Yeah. Out Although of the I, minis, that's my favorite. The, um, for the hard seltzers, I like those Willy Super Brew ones are pretty good. Oh, somebody who I haven't had one, but somebody was just telling me about those. There's like a pomegranate Dude. one that's crazy good. They're okay. not as they're not as um I like I'd say those are the polars are probably my favorite alcohol ones. The polar ones are more bubbly. Yeah. Nipples, that, which I like, but the willies or whatever they're called is uh it's it's almost like juice. Really? Willie's really, really Super Brew. It's like those, awesome. they're made by some like goat farmer or something. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're from the Cape. I think it's actually, they're actually from the Cape or something. That's awesome. Yeah, it's good stuff. There you go. Cool. Well, well Paul, it's been a pleasure talking about willies and beanbags with you. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, man. How do people... Oh, I didn't even show you my new shirt I got for my birthday. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, uh, you got one? There you go. Yep. 
My wife got me the Orson shirt. Oh, uh, yeah. Out. She was on Classy. point. I was going to say, I think I just wrapped it. Rem- I remind her like 17 times. <laughs> <laughs> Squeaky wheel, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think I, I just wrapped up the out. last one the other day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was sold very fast. Yeah. Oh, Orson always does. <laughs> How can people find Lincoln Crafted on the internet, Paul? Sure, yeah. Um, you can find us on Etsy. Um, just search for Lincoln Crafted for our shop. Um, Instagram, at Lincoln Crafted. It's at Lincoln Crafted and, you know, Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. And then um, you, know, you can find us at Crompton. You can find us at Worcester Wares, as well as um, Redemption Rock. And uh, hopefully um, a few other places coming soon. Yeah. When you, when you grow more arms or more children. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> when they make more hours in the day. There you go. Shit. <laughs> Feel that. I'll be buying some of those too, man. Thanks, guys. Though. I appreciate you having me. It was, it's, been a, it's been a pleasure. Best thank of luck you. getting through the holiday season, my dude. Yeah, thank you guys too. Thank you guys too. And shout out to all the people shopping local and... It's, it's big for myself and for all the local businesses, whether it be retail, food, you name it. You know, go to your local place, buy gift cards. It's going to be tough for a lot of people to survive this year, and mm-hmm. it's been it's been great. It's been great soon. A lot of people working on Facebook and Instagram, getting the word out too. So that's been great. So um, yeah, definitely support your local spot when you can. Well said, man. For sure. Hopefully we can see each other soon. And share yeah, I know, right? Right. Or coffee or whatever. <laughs> Seriously. Both. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> and then more. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Hey, welcome back. Um, <laughs> uh, so again, huge thanks to Paul for I coming love on. That, dude. He's the best. He's I the love nicest human being. Paul, like before COVID, I would see Paul at a coffee shop every once in a while. He'd come into Worcester. It just, I, I ran into it at, at a chamber of commerce event. I Did just really? like seeing Paul out because he's always just a happy, positive, chill dude. Yeah. Yeah. He's the best. And like his candles are super rad. I mean, he makes them out of, like I said earlier, like beer and seltzer. So the two things that keep me floating through life. Um, he's the kind of, yeah. that's the kind of story that like you hear like, oh, you have an idea. You can turn any idea into a business. Well, he clearly did. And he's, yeah. his business is so big that he really can't keep up with it. And he's fighting to keep it small. Yeah, I mean, good problems to have, for sure. Shit, why not, right? Do what you want to. That's the beauty of this life. Exactly. So thanks again, Paul. You were fantastic. Thanks, Paul. Um, Yeah, I think it's about that time. Let's do it. Hit us with that good, good, Solon. When you hit them with those stones, ow! (laughs) Gotta slap them with those pokes. Oh, yeah! (laughs) Stokes and pokes. One of these days I might switch it up, see if we can't find another musical artist to help us out. Yeah. All right. If you write music and you listen to our show, you want to write a little jingle for us. We would love to feature any artists and anybody that wants to write us music. We don't have money, but we're not making money. So, but if you want to feel like you want to write us something, we'll totally give you all the shouts outs and all the, the internet kisses There you go. That we, that we can afford. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> internet kisses so this week i'm going to start by poking that it is no surprise to anybody that this year has been friggin' tough it's been tough on everybody and some people are combating it and combating this oncoming winter by putting out their lights months before christmas some people like right after halloween some people shit before halloween i don't care Our neighbors have put up an entire bright, gaudy display, and I friggin' love it because there is so little to just like enjoy this year. And like, you really got to try hard to find the good in the world. And just seeing lights is good. Um, And driving around, man, like Sarah and I did a little drive a couple nights ago just to see who already had them out. And like, yeah, it's nice seeing lights, man. yeah, we haven't even gotten to Thanksgiving yet, but I don't care. And you shouldn't either. So shut up because it's nice. And if people want to leave them up until January, that's cool too. Because shit, just people dying. Let us have our lights. It's true. I don't It's just 
let's let's celebrate the small little things. I know I'm I'm overreacting, and it's it's mostly for the bit, but it's also mostly like, man, let's just enjoy something. Let's just just collectively enjoy something. Exactly. Lights are beautiful. And I also think we should collectively enjoy the new dispensary that opened up here in Worcester. Uh, we had Alex on from Buds last week, and when I went over to get the cans from Greater Good, I realized how close Buds was to Greater Good. So I'm like, oh, Sarah, do you want to take a, a short detour? And she was like, heck yeah, I do. And we went over and, and saw that amazing new facility that they built. And he was not jo- like, when you guys were talking last week during the show, I was only trying to like picture it. And then from the pictures, but to go in, like, it's just cool, man. It's, yeah. They do a fantastic job. But I am especially stoked about Little Buds, which is their 30 or $35 eighth that they sell, which is their white label that uh, Alex was talking about last week. It's, it's quality herb. It's a good, good value. It's been the thing that I've been kind of like hitting on during the day. No, I, no, uh, I, no, I was, <laughs> I got a sativa, which is, uh, so I could stay functional and it's keeping me just like in the groove and not sitting here melting into my chair. So big shout out. Thanks for changing the game. I love to see this, like where this is going and how I want to see how other people react. Other companies react to this and obviously it's not a race to the bottom but like just like alex said i bought this and a couple pre-rolls because why not like this was uh okay i'm gonna have another bowl of this and then the pre-rolls like all right it's special time let's break out there you go so that's that's what i got stoked on little buds what do you got for the people um all right what's up everybody so Actually, technically, I had a different poke. And then while you're talking, I thought of the one that I wanted to, that I thought of earlier today. So it kind of worked out great. But my poke is uh, Sherwin Williams. Did you see this story how they fired this kid that worked at one of their paint stores for, for, the, the, TikTok for his TikTok? Yeah. yeah. So this kid has this TikTok account that has, it's like 1.2 million followers. And he just makes TikToks of like mixing paint and stuff like that. Now, either he buys the paint himself or it's like customer's paint that was purchased. So he's not stealing any product or anything. Um, And so his phone's out for a couple seconds. He does the TikTok. People go crazy for it. And it's all only Sherwin-Williams. So like, it's not the Sherwin-Williams like official account, which they probably don't have one, but this kid was basically doing free advertising for Sherwin Williams. Did you see the thing where he went and brought his proposal to Sherwin yes. Williams Mark? Yes. And I'm not surprised that they, that like their entire marketing department was like, no, it's not worth it. Even though this kid clearly is on to something and like it sh- has, has actual proof that it works and people are obsessed with it. And yeah, they passed on it because they're morons, but so eventually he got fired. Um, for gross negligence is what they said. Yeah. But the entire, I mean, I follow my whole Twitter feed is like either sports writers or marketing people. And every single person was like, when is what's the other like Benjamin Moore or like one of those other competitors going to pop up and just give this kid money to run their, give him a paint mixer. Their t- uh, TikTok. Yeah. Give him a paint mixer. Let him go crazy. Um, give him a paint mixer and pigment. Yeah. That's it. It's Question brilliant. Nothing. The content is brilliant. It's literally just guess what color it's going to be. And yeah. you just watch the, the pigments go in. It's quality it's, content. It hurts it's no genius. one. No, it's genius. And they're just, they're so stupid. I agree but, with that. Good poke. Yeah. Thanks, man. Um, and then my stoke is, like I said, I like re fell in love with music today. There's a band called Seaway that I've never listened to. Um, seen their name a lot. They're always touring with bands that I like and I kind of follow. And somebody on Twitter has posted uh, like little clips of their video a bunch. I was like this, I didn't know this band sounded like the way they sound. Like I always pictured Seaway being kind of like a, like just another like emo kind of yelling pop punky type band. I was very wrong. They're actually awesome. I listen to their new record all day. It's called Big Vibe. It's really, 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 really good. Um, 
they definitely, I mean, they come out of that, that pop punk world, but you can hear the like 1975 influence on them big time. Um, they're wonderful. So go listen to big vibe because it's really, really, really good. And I hate myself for not listening to it earlier. I like those bands though. Like some of the time the holdout bands are some, like I used to hate on converge and really? Oh, I just didn't get it. I totally said it on the show. And Oh, I used to make fun of them all the time. My buddy, Matt, and I would just walk around our room going, blah, 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 I'm converged. Blah, blah, blah. And now they're my favorite <laughs> bands. So that's awesome. I never hated on Seaway. I just never like gave them the time of day. And I definitely regret that. Cause they're, they're really, really, really good. I actually, I've missed going to shows, but I like really missed going to shows today because as soon as the first song started, I was like, Oh fuck, this probably kills live too. This would be so much fun. But their merch is really cool too. I don't really buy band merch that much as I'm wearing a band sweatshirt, but whatever. Um, I'm wearing a band sweatshirt too, but I yeah. <laughs> printed, I printed this one. It's crooked, I got, which is why I, I was given it. this one. Yeah. So we didn't buy the band merch, but we have it. Uh, but I could see myself buying some seaway merch because it's really cool. It, I, I like it's really interesting. Make our bands make a brand out of their their band and make yeah. cool merch and like yeah, it's it's really really cool merch actually. So. All right, people. I think you did it. I think you waste another hour listening to us ramble. And for that, hey, we're yeah, forever yeah. grateful. You can yeah. find us on the internet at Seltzer Time Official or SeltzerTime.com. You could find me at Hunchback Travis. You can find me at Dick Chuck77 on Instagram and Twitter and Seltzer Time Official on Instagram and Twitter and TikTok. I'm starting Guys. a new thing with our TikTok where I like review a CD because I have, I don't know, hundreds of them in this room and I need to have fun doing something. So I'm going to have fun doing that. And I just posted the first one like two hours ago. I'll have to go check that out. It's pretty awesome. People, we need your help. We are approaching 100 episodes and need you to send us a one to two minute video to seltzertimeofficial at gmail.com. You could crack a seltzer. You could tell us what you love. You can give a shout out to anybody. And we're going to put our favorite ones in the show. If you have a cousin who happens to work for Ariana Grande, feel free to ask them if they can ask her, if she can send over a video congratulating us on our 100th episode. Um, that would be kind of cool. Specific. I like it. You got to oh, make yeah. specific ask, asks. In somebody this somewhere has got to know somebody. Somebody somewhere. All right, people. <laughs> See you next week. Bye, guys.